Tonight we honor Mr. Harvey Kruger, a man whose life has had impact for decades in the banking and finance world and also in the life of the State of Israel, credited with single-handedly opening the international markets to Israel's government and Israel's corporations. Harvey Kruger has been on the boards of many of the most significant organizations in Israel's history. Join us as we visit with Harvey and learn more about his remarkable story. In your early years, what did you understand about Israel? I didn't even know where Israel was. Now that's a strange comment for a, a man who grew up in a Jewish household. There wasn't a lot about Israel in the press. There wasn't anything really when I was growing up about Holocaust uh, or any of the other bad things that happened to Jews in Europe. Uh, while Israel became a country in 1948, uh, I was in high school in 1948. So I was unknowing about Israel. With your success and your influence, you've been the patron of many causes. Why did you decide to work so hard on behalf of Israel? So one afternoon, I took off and walked up Allenby Street around 5 or 5.30 in the afternoon. It was very crowded which is because it was when people went home. And as I was walking, I realized I was looking in the faces of the people who were walking past me. And I assumed that I was looking for family, but I didn't see any family. And I didn't know that I ever had any family in Israel. But I, wanted to, but I didn't understand why I was searching the, their faces. As I continued to walk, though, I had what I think many people would know is an epiphany. And that was because I realized that I was looking for myself. I recognized, finally, that what I was looking for was a place and an understanding of who and what I was. And that grew on me, and as a result, I became totally enamored with the State of Israel and have spent an enormous amount of my career working to help Israel. You became known as Israel's godfather on Wall Street. How did that come about? It was at Kuhn Loeb that I got introduced to Israel. Um, we had a partner named Sigmund Warburg who had a daughter living in Israel. He and I became very, very good friends. And at one point, he proposed to Kuhn Loeb that we uh, lead a public offering for Bank Leumi, which was the oldest and then biggest bank in Israel. Um, and I was chosen to do the work. And it ultimately led to an offering in the United States. Israel Discount Bank, which was owned by the Reconati family, decided that they wanted to do what Bank Leumi had done. In other words, go public in the United States. I was selected to do that public offering as well. They say that I brought Israel to the international capital markets. I think it's true. I think it's true with all those offerings. Almost every company that came here is, some, is a company that I underwrote. When I say I, my firm underwrote, but I brought them in. Your philanthropic and political efforts have given you access to presidents, ambassadors, prime ministers. What is your primary message to these leaders about Israel? I want them to understand the importance of Israel to their own well-being, whether they're Jewish or not Jewish, but this audience ought to recognize what Israel has contributed to this world. It's an extraordinary thing. Israel, by its, the fact that it started with nothing and used its intellect, the intellect of its people, it's the, it's the most important thing that Israel has to develop high technology, to develop medicines, to develop uh, uh, agricultural products uh, uh, of incredible value. Uh, it serves the interests of the whole world. You've been a great friend and a supporter of Reverend Robert Stearns and Eagle's Wings. In all of your years of working on behalf of Israel and other organizations, Eagle's Wings represents the first evangelical Christian organization that you have partnered with and supported. Why did you decide to work with Dr. Stearns? The quick and true answer is it's, it's Dr. Stearns, and I don't even remember how I met him. He shares my visions, 
As an evangelical, he shares my visions. He understands Israel more thoroughly than I do. His dreams are my dreams. He sends college students to Israel to learn about Israel. I remember one young man who decided that he was going to go to medical school in Israel as a result of his visit. I met a young woman from Eagle's Wings who is in law school or was in law school when I met her, who put together, uh, by the way, these are people who are not Jewish, but put together the Jewish students in her law school in order to create a group to help support Israel. Robert Stearns has accomplished his own, in a sense, miracles. He takes, as I say, what, 20, 25 students a year, puts them in an area where it, which is strange, as strange to them as it was to me when I first went, and they've also fallen in love. That's not an accident, and it's his leadership that's done that. I consider him a friend, a mentor, and a man thoroughly worthwhile of support. I really think that what he's doing is important, just as important for the evangelical movement as it is for the, 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 the country of Israel. Harvey, thank you so much for your time. One last question. Looking forward, what would you say is your hope and your wish for Israel? My greatest hope is that Israel survive as long as it possibly can, as long as it has already, but that it survive in an environment which has peace. Israel has never really had peace since its creation as a modern state. In a sense, the Jews haven't had peace throughout the history of the world. I think they're entitled to have peace. Ladies and gentlemen, in honor of his remarkable accomplishments, tonight we establish in his name the Harvey Kruger Israel Experience Scholarship.